Good morning. What a joy and pleasure to see you all here today and to be with you, especially if you are a guest or visitor among us today. Uh, we're delighted to have you here and hope that uh, today's service will be a blessing and that we can continue uh, a relationship into the future. Uh, for those of you that are regular members, of course, uh, always wonderful for us to get back together in such a way. Beautiful day. A couple of announcements that will do not have slides, uh, so you have to depend on your, your ears and your memory for this, but uh, this information is going to be available in the newsletter and in the office and so on. So on May 15th, that's a Saturday, uh, we are having the first of a series of musical events outdoors in the parking lot. And uh, Dave Pettigrew is the name of the artist who's coming up from uh, northern New Jersey. He's a Christian a songwriter and uh, a kind of devotional leader and storyteller. Uh, so he will be uh, leading us in, a, in an event at 7 p.m. on the 15th of May. Tickets uh, are $15, I believe, yes. Leah Solomon is in the back row there. Can you raise your hand, Leah? Uh, she can help you if you need tickets or Rachel in the office during the week uh, for that. That's, and, and I say the first because then we expect to have at least two and maybe as many as four or more uh, events like that during the summer. Uh, next Sunday, uh, there is no confirmation because it's Mother's Day and people will be uh, headed home after worship uh, to do whatever they do with their families. Uh, and it's also First Communion Sunday, so we'll have four young people receiving their First Communion next Sunday morning. Uh, Judy Ludwig, in this section of the back, her hand is up now, and uh, she can help you with gift cards being sold by Puppetude. This is a major fundraiser for the Puppetude project. Uh, we get a, a kind of a kickback from the various gift cards that we sell. Uh, and so that's Judy's baby there. Uh, we uh, encourage that very much. Bible study, six o'clock Zoom on Tuesdays. We're continuing at the Zoom because there are certain people who find that really, really helpful. They're either a bit distant from us or they have trouble getting home in time after work and whatnot. Uh, and we're going to be doing something different now. Uh, this is a study of a little book called Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, who was a very important German Lutheran pastor in uh, Nazi Germany. He was executed by them for opposition to Hitler. But in his lifetime, he managed to write a couple of really important books, uh, and, and Life Together is one of them. So we'll be reading that together. And uh, we have ordered some of those books. Uh, if you're in that class already, or if you want to be, we can uh, get some more. Uh, and then this coming Wednesday, we will resume our in-person Bible study in the Fellowship Hall at 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, a circle that's uh, well distanced. Uh, and we'll have a discussion on the first meeting as to what subject matter to uh, take up. A book of the Bible, a character of the Bible, a theme from the Bible, or what have you. So we'd love to have you show up on Wednesday at 11 to assist with that. Uh, so confirmation for 7th and 8th grades on uh, most Sundays is at 11 o'clock, as I say, not next week, but today. And, and we're getting close to the end of our survey of the Old Testament, so we'll run certainly through the end of May, maybe into the first weekend of June, and, to, and bring that to a close for this school year. We have a family in particular need, if anybody would like to uh, put an offering you know, for our discretionary fund, and if you write family in need, we assure you that that specific money will get to that specific family. Hilltop uh, is interviewing now for a new director. Jan is leaving us at the end of July, and so uh, we're looking for somebody to fill that position well before that so they can shadow her, and uh, if you know somebody who would be interested, pass that word along. Uh, uh, Pam Little, would you raise your hand? She's here in the front. Uh, she's a person to talk to if you have questions about that. Uh, there's a purplish card on the tables in the back. This is a kind of follow-up from last fall's stewardship campaign, which by the nature of things was pretty, uh, pretty limited. And so this card uh, would be helpful to us if you would uh, check the box on here that applies. Either I made a pledge last year, that's the way it's going to be. I didn't make a pledge last year, here's my pledge. Uh, I did make a pledge last year, but I need to change it. Here's the new number. Uh, or I can't do a financial thing right now, but I'll keep you in prayer and so on. So it's a brief, simple form. And uh, you, if you'd sign that, that would be really helpful to us. <clears throat> the uh, projection 
here is, uh, is meant to be experimental, and I think we've decided that it's working well enough to move ahead. So what we need now are a couple of really, really high-end, bright, bright projectors and, uh, and a better kind of a screen setup. And we have some information about that. It's going to, you know, these things are a little bit pricey sometimes. So if you want to contribute to that, or we also uh, need to find a, a better camera for our streaming service that takes our service out live, really uh, to more than one country at this point. Uh, not huge numbers of people watching, but people from uh, all over the place are watching. So uh, we want to do that well, and, and that will cost a little bit too. So if you want to contribute to that, uh, we're giving you that opportunity. Just write tech in the corner of your check, and uh, we'll be able to purchase the things that we need. I would love to see a few volunteers. Oh, oh, oh back to the tech, back to the tech. I, I need a couple more volunteers to work with uh, Bob Major and Johnny and Ellie to do the recording part of the service. We still record a DVD every week. Uh, and, but it's falling on the two of them mostly, and so we're trying to uh, recruit some new volunteers. A couple more would be a good rotation if you're willing to do that. It's not terribly difficult, but it does require, you know, the commitment to be here to do that, uh, you know, when your rotation comes up. And I'd love a few volunteers who would say, I will come and set up an outdoor coffee hour. You know, just, just haul one of those little wheeled wagons out there with a coffee pot on it and, uh, and some hot water and tea and we could gather outside after worship on a nice day like this and uh, mingle a little bit. Or if you prefer, you could even stop at Duncan and you know, come back with a box of Joe and put out some hot water for tea, but you know, so that we'd have something to do after we exited the building here. Uh, it would not be hard, but it, again, would need somebody who would say, I'll do that. Having said those kinds of announcements uh, and the newsletters available for this month uh, in hard copy and online, uh, I invite you now to hear a few verses of At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in this hymn of praise, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we continue with the readings of Scripture. first reading is from Acts 8, verses 26 to 40. Then, the, then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. 
Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, of the Candace queen of, e of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the, prof reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you were reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with his scripture, with this, with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he, as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Holy wisdom, holy word. Psalm 22, 25 to 31. For you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow, the, sleep in, the earth bow down before him shall bow, all who go down to the dust, and I shall live, live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Saying, saying this, saying that he has done that he has done it. The second reading is First John four seven to twenty one. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not, whoever does not love, does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we may live through him. In this, in, this, in, in this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent, the son, sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, 
because he is, so we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has not, fear has not to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Holy wisdom, holy word. Amen. We will now hear a recorded anthem. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John in the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have, been, you have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. And the young people, do we have any young people today to go to, to the fellowship hall? I don't know what's going on with the computer here that's acting up, but we'll, we'll live with it. Ah, yes. 
There we go. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus is the vine. This, this will come back on. I, they, I'm assured of this. Uh, Jesus is the true vine. So Jesus is the source of life. Jesus is the source uh, of, the, of the kind of energy that flows through him and then through us and out from all of that comes this fruitfulness, this, this, uh, this evidence of the power of the resurrection of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit and the faithfulness of the branches. We are the branches. He says, apart from me you can do nothing. I'll, I'll correct Jesus here just a little bit. Apart from Jesus we can do wrong. And that will become our choice as each day of life unfolds. We get to decide what kind of fruit do we bear. We never get to choose to bear no fruit. We only get to choose whether to bear the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of faithfulness, the fruit of God, or we get to bear the fruit of evil, the fruit of destruction, the fruit of death. Are you going to try to fix that, my good man? I don't know what... Uh, no, that's all right. This is good. We don't want to stand on too much formality here. Uh, the, the fruitfulness is the product of faithfulness. And there's probably nothing more upsetting to our risen Lord than to have, uh, we're grafted in by the way, you remember Paul said that, we're, we are branches that are grafted in, we aren't born into Christ, we have to be grafted in, that happens through baptism and the spirits indwelling in our hearts, we become grafted into this vine. But then imagine if you were a regular everyday earthly gardener and you spend your time grafting these millions and millions of branches into the vine and they just sat there. You know, I mean, that's just not the way it's supposed to work. The world needs better than that. And you need better than that. You need that sense of fruitfulness in your own life. You need the capacity to feel like, yes, the life of Christ is in me. The joy of Christ is in me. The peace of Christ is in me, and it has to bear fruit. And of course, most of all, as Paul reminded us, the greatest of the fruits of the Spirit is love. There has to be, there has to be evidence of the love of Christ in the lives of the people of Christ. Now, you and I all have some differences in the way we do our prayer lives, our devotional time, and our private uh, lives. But I would ask you to, to do something like this, either in the morning or in the evening, to do a kind of a, uh, the AA people, the 12-steppers call it a searching moral inventory, but to do a kind of a reflection on your last 24 hours. How was I fruitful in the way that Jesus was talking about here? How was I able, in my words, in my deeds, in my decisions, to bear the kind of fruit that this, this vine would have me bear? How would anybody that I contact have any sense of the presence of God in their lives or the love of Christ that was being emanating out toward them or the, or the promise of a new life? that is contained in the, in the power of the gospel. What did I do? And of course, if we're really honest, we also want to say, what did I do that, that didn't make that work? What did I do that was a barrier to that? What did I do that, that made it harder for people to believe in the God that we talk about here? This is a living relationship, so Christ is alive, the power is flowing, we are the branches, the fruit needs to show, and in there is a, as many ways for that fruit to show as there are individual Christians in the world. Your demonstration of this life-giving gift will be different from everybody else's. We need you to bear your fruit. Each of us needs to depend on the other to be willing to let this, this powerful life-giving grace move through us and produce something something for somebody day in day out 
Let's see if this will stay up long enough for me to put up a slide I've made specifically for my sermon. Ah. So in Galatians, Paul actually lists these nine things, not that this is an exhaustive list, but he lists these nine things as ways of thinking about how the fruitfulness the Spirit might look in your life. You'll notice that he puts love first, of course. But just to fill that out, because how did that look? So joy and peace and patience. I won't ask anybody to raise their hand if they need a little patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You've heard these before. But I'm asking if you would take them seriously into your heart and make that a part of your, your Easter discipline, if you will, as we contemplate the ways in which the resurrection of Christ makes a difference in our lives and makes a difference in our world, could we take a list like this, even any two or three of these, and just say, how can I do that? Or how can I do that better? My experience of New England Lutheran congregations, and I mean this with all true, honestly, uh, sincere Christian love, is that we hold a lot of these gifts in our hearts but we also have such a sense of privacy and uh, and kind of personal space and I'm not talking about during the pandemic I mean this is just how we live you know kind of keep our neighbors at an arm's length for their sake and ours that sometimes we don't show the things we actually have here and it's not because we mean to be faithful or because we're negative or we're, we're not really disciples of Christ. It's, it's a culture here. And I remember I was brought up in this. It was like the best thing you can do is, is just be quiet and mind your business. <laughs> Why pester other people with your stuff? You know? That's an old Yankee way of thinking. And in some of the parts of the Lutheran church that are also Scandinavian, I know there's mostly Germanic here, but, but the Scandinavian churches, they have that same general idea as well. It's just like, why should I impose what I feel or think or believe on other people? And I'm not asking you to become aggressively arm-twisting, you know, collar-grabbing evangelists. But I am asking because this is the scriptural warrant that we have, I am asking that you take this sort of list or these types of themes and ideas and say, yes, it is important that these things show. We don't want our love for our neighbors to be a hidden treasure, a lamp under a bushel. They need more than that, and we will grow more deeply in our faith as our fruitfulness expands. The vine is Christ, and you really are the branches. This is a deeply intimate, organic union. And it is the intention of Almighty God that the things Christ taught and embodied become part of our normal daily routines. If some parts of this are hard, then make that the focus of your own discipline so that together we become a body of people recognizably influenced by this man Jesus. I'll share with you a brief experience I had yesterday that was really fun. I'm uh, excited as all the time about ecumenical and interfaith relationships and there happens to be off on the east side of town a little Korean Buddhist temple. So I've been trying to get in touch with them just to meet them and see. And Saturday, they said, come on down. Come on down at 1 o'clock and, and we'll meet you and, you know, see where that goes. And I walked in and, and it was actually, a, they were having a class on Buddhism and they had me come in and sit down. And I'm telling you, the room was filled with this sense of uh, warmth and hospitality, rejoicing that a Christian had come just, you know, to see what they were up to. Uh, there was clearly a sense that they meant to be what they were talking about. And in terms of ethics, by the way, that overlaps very closely with Christians. That's what we want to be like. We want it to be so that when people come into our presence, they leave saying, ah, that person's words of faith are not empty. 
I could felt it. I felt the warmth. I felt the hospitality. I felt the compassion. I felt the joy. I felt the hope. I felt the warmth. I felt like I was safe, respected, that I belonged, and that if I ever went there again, that would be all right. Can we do that? I mean outwardly, instead of just sometimes sitting and saying, I saw a visitor the other day, I sure hope they felt welcome. <laughs> or I ran into a person on the street who looked like they were in need, I sure hope somebody shows up to give them a hand, you know. I mean, we are the branches. It is a high and holy calling to be the branches grafted into the vine of Christ. We are the branches. And we have, we have our template, we have our framework, we have our model for how we can bear the fruit that Christ seeks to have us bear. So that the world, the world, the whole world, at least gets a glimpse or a signal or a sign that what we talk about in this space, in this hour, is real and is the world's hope. We do this not because of our own merit or wisdom or virtue, but we do this because we are the branches of the vine, which is Christ. Amen. Adrian will play for us a couple of verses of O Day of Resurrection. stand. We have a couple of classic confessions of our own faith. We are using during this season the Nicene Creed. Would you speak with me together? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We move now to the prayers of the church and this is the first Sunday of the month so we'll be doing our healing prayer for the people on our prayer list. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent the disciples to continue his work of healing. 
In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. Jim, Lori, Francine, Pat, Robert, and Mel. Chuck, Vinny, Eddie, Irene, Elena. Raymond, Judith, Kevin, Karen, Jim. Rebecca, Nancy, Richard, Gervinder, Armando. Brian, Brian and Lisa, Holly, Joe, George, Briseo. Eddie, Theo and Victoria, Peter, Joe, Liz. Jill, Nancy, Cheryl and Rich, Wayne, Barry. Sigrid, Melissa, Doris and Dutch, Dolores, Gerard. Irene, Betsy, Diane, Judy, Bruce and Liz. Christy, Holly, Ed, Mary Lynn, Gabby. Bob and Ann. Carol, Pastor Wayne, Connie and Don, Wayne. Owen, Maggie, Erica, Alexis, Bill. Brad, Jim, Vicki, Jen, Johnson, Bob. Ed, Lynn, Burke, Jeff and family, Lori and family. Rebecca, Tommy, Rita, Ida, Mervyn. Cynthia, Richard, Bob and Lynn. Bernice, Ruth. Lori and Rose, Richard, Caroline, Denise, Doris. Michael, Dennis, Ron, Greg, Tom. Cindy, Bruce and Kathy, Gary, Wal Wally, Caroline. Marge, Pat, Sharon, Grant, Mary. Alfred Alfreda, Dave, Chris, Rosemary, Jay. Linda, Tricia, Bob, Marge, Richard. John, Reed, Jackie, Russ, Jean. Nancy, Anna, Paul, Karen, Catherine. Helen, J.O., Jaden, Mike, Curran, Diane. Jen, Charlie, Michelle, and Jessica, Donna. Rich, Dustin, Skyler, Andrea, Kayla. Linda, Diane, Kayla, and family. Bob, Shannon, Karen. Aura, Sharon, Mason, Lewis, Catherine. Joyce Ann, Marianne, Diane, Jack, Max. Lisa, Aaron and family. Tom, Pam, Miguel. <coughs> Jack and Barbara, Lorraine, Clarence and Priscilla, Paula, Larry. Diane, Clinton, the Maxwell family, the Loomis family, the Sedgwick family. Doug, Vinetta, Doris, Dee, Richard, and Marilyn. Uh, Brandon, Tyler, Eric, Zachary, Brandon. Jonathan, Tom, Brian, Eric, Peter. Anderson, and Dominic. Living God, grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing of body, mind, or spirit. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. For any other needs that are known to us, the congregation is free to lift prayer silently or out loud. May our Lord's help be abundant and swift. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you, Dana. 
It's okay. We continue now with our prayers leading up to the communion, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We speak together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we will open our communion elements. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. As you open your elements, you may receive the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we hear a couple of verses of Alleluia, Jesus is risen.
and serve the Lord and your neighbors.